guys, Sleepy Morty here, back with another video, and today we are here putting Windows 7 vs 8 slash 8.1 and Windows 10 in a head-to-head -head challenge to see which one is better across the same amount of hardware. Now, Windows 10 does bring some new features to the table that are outside of the performance front, such as things like an overhauled UI and a better start menu and an overall easier to navigate system. Windows 10 does bring sort of the features that we wanted in Windows 8 to a new operating system. On top of that, we get newer features such as being able to transfer between tablet mode and desktop mode and all those types of things on the fly without having to install a different operating system or anything along those lines. You can just simply set and go. Now on top of that, in the performance side, the main thing everyone's been talking about it has been DirectX 12, which is, well, the next evolution of DirectX. Now at the time of recording, it's still relatively new with the new OS and basically no one's really supporting it that much, so we're yet to see that many games supporting DirectX 12 and mostly it's tech demos with, I believe, like two different games on the market that you can buy today that supports this technology. So unfortunately at the time of recording we're not seeing that much of an instant performance hit. If you're expecting to upgrade to Windows 10 and get 30, 60, 80 FPS better, you might want to check yourself once again as many games on the market as I just mentioned don't support this technology yet. And on top of that I won't be surprised too if we need certain types of hardware to take advantage of DirectX 12 as well. So at the time of recording we're just going to have to live with the new OS that doesn't really have that much taken advantage of it. But I guess we'll get to today's testing. So for the test system in question, it was an i7-5820K based system at 4GHz with a Gigabyte X99 UD3 motherboard paired up with 32GB of crucial DDR4 memory at 2133 MHz and a Kingston Fury SSD for each of the different operating systems that we ran so there's no sort of a overlay on each other. And we also too grabbed ourselves a 980 reference video card for our graphics side. Now each OS as I just mentioned was a fresh install on this specific SSD that I allocated to them. So they all had their own SSDs and basically the SSDs were bought at about the same time. So there's no degrading performance over each other. Now, before we get into our numbers and tests and those types of things, I did want to say a few things first. Number one being we could definitely have improved our results in terms of the synthetics and sort of real world tests because we didn't exactly go ahead and enable things like quick boot and spend hours optimizing the systems to go ahead and get the best numbers out of them. Basically, what we did was go ahead and load up our version of Windows, install any drivers and software and do all our updates and ran the test. We didn't spend the hours upon hours optimizing our system for the best possible results. In games we maxed everything out as usual and in just day to day tasks we didn't do anything like remove stuff from the boot manager and do anything fancy like that. We just loaded everything up and ran with the test. So I guess we'll start to get into the test and we'll start with the first thing that everyone does with their system and that is a cold boot test. As we can see by this graph Windows 10 and Windows 8 leaves Windows 7 in the dust. It seems to be with these newer versions of Windows with SSDs around and those types of things, we're getting much faster systems and overall it's getting to be a lot better. Now with that being said, both of them, in fact all of them, were a lot faster than being on a mechanical drive and even Windows 7 was notably faster on a SSD than a mechanical drive, but Windows 10 and 8 do edge it out in this particular category. Going to sleep times was kind of basically everyone was the same here. Because we have a super fast SSD and a large capacity kit of RAM, we're not really having any bottlenecks in our particular system and all the operating systems that we use today basically go ahead and dump everything that the system's doing into RAM and once it goes ahead and wakes up everything just sucks straight out of RAM and with super fast DDR4 RAM at 2133 megahertz we're not really having any bottlenecks here so there wasn't really that much difference in this sleep wake test. Now we did go ahead and do one synthetic test that I sort of felt I should have run or well I did run anyway which was PC Mark 8 and I have no idea what happened with this particular test. Now I do understand some people who are saying that synthetic tests are not a real representation of computers because they put unrealistic amounts of workloads and those types of things and for this I kind of agree with you as looking at the numbers I have flat out no idea how this happened and I just could not get anything to work. So take it for what it is and I guess we'll just move into the real world stuff which you guys will be doing at home. And let's go ahead and jump into some games with our usual run of gaming and well there was a very little difference between all of them. Whilst I won't say that there was no difference there was certainly a little bit of difference it wasn't enough that you could sit down in a Windows 10 based system and say that this is miles ahead better than Windows 7 at the time of recording. Especially as time does go on and optimizations do get made and DirectX 12 does get built into games we're most likely to see better performance in the future so I guess we'll come back to this topic a little bit later down the line. So at this point it's looking pretty good that Windows 10 does edge out 8 and 7 by a tiny little mark and if you compare a 10 straight down to 7 there is a little bit of a difference but overall it is still quite 
quite minor performance increase between them all. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Because Windows 10 is a free upgrade from 7 and 8, there's not really that much saying not to go ahead and do it. There's a little bit of performance increase and down the line we're definitely going to see more performance increase in the performance topics. On top of that we also do get security patches and better updates from Windows or Microsoft to go ahead and give you a better overall experience and well it's not really half that bad. Unless your device suffers from like a no sleep state or something along those lines such as the Surface Pro 2 does for some reason does not go to sleep with Windows 10 I have no idea why um, you will basically have no problems. Unlike topics like DDR3 versus DDR4 where there's a small to no performance increase and it does cost you a lot more money Windows 10 is once again free so you're not really spending any money to get any more performance. In fact you're getting performance without spending money. So I guess this brings us to our final conclusion for this video. In the first time in Windows history we have finally got a new version of Windows that offers a different UI, update graphics and basically an overhaul in the whole operating system that costs us zero dollars and gives us better performance when gaming in some particular tasks in some particular games. Do keep in mind that at the time of recording it is very particular as to which games will take advantage of Windows 10 and some just perform worse. So do do your research into what games you'll be playing and you should get it overall a fairly good experience. Guys with that being said like or dislike the video accordingly let me know if you've made the move or are going to make the move to Windows 10 and let me know what you got in your gaming results. Did you kind of find that DirectX 12 was a little bit overhyped or are you still pretty excited for games to come out with DirectX 12 support? So guys give us a sub if you like what we're doing and I'll see you all next time for another video.